Welcome back. It can be useful to know the specification of your computer. Software often has a minimum specification, so by knowing what is in your machine, you can determine whether it's capable of running the new software. As always in Windows, there are a couple of ways to do this. The first only shows a very basic information, but to be honest, this is enough in most cases. The second displays full details of every component in your machine. To see the basic information, click on the Start menu, then scroll down to Windows System, and click on Control Panel. Control Panel is where you can view and change lots of Windows settings, including clock and time zone settings, network and hardware configuration, as well as see what programs are installed and uninstall those programs if you want to. Control Panel has been around for as long as Windows. If you've had any kind of problems with your computer, it's been one of the first places to go to try to resolve it. Windows 10 has a newer way to get to most settings, however, and that's through the cog icon in the Start menu. This loads the new Windows Settings window. I'll show you this in a little while, although I must confess I still tend to default to using Control Panel for most of my needs, just because that's what I'm familiar with. Anyway, now we have the Control Panel open, Click on System and Security. Note some of the options in here, such as Power Options, which you can use to configure the time delay on your computer turning off. Or there's Windows Defender Firewall, which is a piece of security software that can help block hackers getting access to your computer. I'll look at some of these in detail throughout this course, but for now, click on System. We can now view basic information about the computer, such as the exact version of Windows that is running. Some software or features are only available in certain versions of Windows, so it can be useful to know this. We can also see the processor and memory details. Remember from an earlier video, these are essential parts of the computer. In this case, it's an Intel Core i7 processor with 32 gigs of RAM. That's quite a high spec machine, to be honest. This machine is a fair few years old now, well, in, for computers anyway but I spent a lot of money at the time knowing that it should last me a while. The next section of this screen shows me the computer name and work group information. This is only relevant in a network setting and only really applicable in a local area network. I'll cover what this is and where this information may be useful in the network section of this course. Lastly, we have a Windows activation status. This tells us that the version of Windows running on this computer is fully licensed and that the software has been verified or activated as Microsoft calls it. Let's compare this to the full system information. Click on the Start menu again, then find Windows Administration Tools, and lastly click on System Information. Now we can still see that basic information we had before. For example, we have the OS or Operating System version here, the processor details here, and the RAM information here but we also have a lot more detail. So not only does it tell me the total RAM in the computer, but I can also see how much is available. Or I have information on where the Windows program files can be found. On the left, I can drill down to further information. So clicking on the plus sign next to components, I can inspect details for many of the individual components that make up the computer. CD-ROM, for example, tells me the drive letter. More on drive letters when we get to manage files section. Think of it as a name given to a filing cabinet. I can also see that in this case it's actually a DVD writer and not just a CD drive. Similar details can be found for the other entries here. Display can be useful as some more powerful software, particularly games, would only work if the display component or graphics card, as it's known, is powerful enough. System information is just read only. I can't make any changes to the system from here. Let's take a look at how we can start to configure the computer to our own taste. I'll compare how to do this through the control panel and the new system settings for you. Remember, control panel is found on the start menu, Windows System, Control Panel, and Settings is found by clicking on the cog in the bottom left of the start menu. I'll have both open side by side so we can easily compare the two. Let's look at something nice and simple first of all, the clock. In control panel, we can click on clock and region. 
Click on date and time opens a dialog box and we can click on change date and time button to update the time. Notice the shield symbol in the bottom. This shows that we need administrative rights to perform this action. If you're working from your own computer, don't worry, you almost certainly have admin rights. If you're working from a work or school computer, you probably don't. Administrative rights normally requires an admin login. This is to ensure that unauthorised users don't make changes to the system. You may be wondering why changing the time needs admin rights. Well, it can throw a number of other systems out. For example, the system can get confused if it talks to another computer and the time is a long way off between the two systems. Click the change date or time displays the final dialog box where we can indeed change the date and time. When we are happy, click on OK to save the changes or cancel to ignore the changes. Now, through the new Windows settings window, click on time and language. You'll notice there is a button to change to the date and time, but at the moment, clicking on it doesn't do anything. That is because it is disabled. To enable it, I need to turn off the setting to set the time automatically. Now I can click change. This time I have a somewhat different layout to change the date and time. Once happy, click change or cancel to ignore any changes that you've made. I'll click cancel and turn on the setting to set the time automatically. Windows is actually pretty good at keeping the correct time. It will periodically use the internet to check the time against one of the a number of atomic clocks. So as long as you have the correct time zone selected, it will keep very good time. Notice the option here in Windows settings and in control panel, change time zone. Let's compare another example. In this case, we'll have a look at audio settings. Again, I'll start with control panel. Click on control panel in the address bar to return to the starting page. Click on hardware and sound. Now I have a couple of options. I can click on sound, which opens a dialog box, which I can use to adjust which playback and recording device is used, or I can troubleshoot any issues such as audio not being played. Let me just show you one of the settings that's worth a quick look. Select the playback device that you're using. This is normally the device with the green tick on it. Select it by clicking once on it. Now click configure. This opens a wizard to configure the speakers that you have connected. Just follow the instructions and click next and proceed through the wizard. If I click on adjust system volume, I can select at what volume various aspects of Windows is played. So I might set system sounds low if I'm listening to music and I don't want Windows notifications dings keep interrupting me. In the Windows settings window, I can click on the arrow in the top left to take me back to the front page. Now select system and from the menu on the left select sound. Now I have fairly familiar options listed on the right. I can select an output device if I have more than one connected, for example, speakers or headphones. I can adjust the overall volume. This can also be done from the system tray in the bottom right. Click on the speakers and move the slider to the desired volume. Clicking on the sound control panel displays the same dialog box we saw a moment ago from the control panel. This settings page does have the option to access Bluetooth and other devices. It's easier to do this from here than through control panel. Lastly, let's take a look at display settings. This includes a background image and resolution of the display. It's easier to do this using the cog icon on the desktop. So let's start there. From the Windows settings window, click on personalization. This takes us to background settings. It's not the only place to change the background. I'll show you the other setting that can affect the background shortly. From the drop down box at the top, we can select whether we want a specific picture as our background, whether we want a single solid color or slideshow. This will cycle the background through a number of pictures, depending on which option we select will dictate what option we have next. If we select picture, there are a few samples, or we can click browse to add one from somewhere on our computer. If we select solid color, we can choose which color we'd like. But if we select slideshow, we can choose a folder that contains all the pictures we would like to use. We select how often to change the picture and whether we would like the pictures to appear in random order. The slideshow option can have a slight impact on battery performance if you're using a laptop. 
so we can disable the slideshow if the computer is running from battery. The next drop down box we have, if we've chosen slideshow or picture, we can choose how Windows displays the picture. It's best to have a play around with this setting. For example, if you have a portrait picture, you probably don't want to use stretch or span, as these can have quite funny consequences. At the bottom of the page, we have a few links. The first takes us to related topics. High contrast allows you to change how things like message boxes are displayed to make them easier to read. The Think Your Settings section allows you to keep your settings between different computers. Assuming I use the same account to sign in, I can have the same background across all computers that I use, for example. Windows settings pages don't have a help menu or button, but instead it offers some suggested questions that you may have related to the page you are viewing. Click on any of the links to search the internet for answers related to the selected topic. Lastly, there's a link to provide Microsoft feedback on your experience with Windows. The computer's display is made up of lots of tiny dots. Each dot can be any colour. This makes up the colour display that you are watching this on. The number or density of the dots impacts the quality, clarity and size of the display. This is referred to as the resolution. If you're finding the screen difficult to view, either because it's too small or because it's not giving a sharp picture, you might need to adjust the resolution. To do this, open up the Windows Settings application and click on System. This should take you straight to the Display Properties. If not, just click on Display on the left. The section that we are interested in here is Resolution. This currently says 1280 by 720. That means that the display is showing or representing 1,280 dots across the screen, left to right, and 720 dots, top to bottom. I can adjust it by clicking on the drop down box and selecting the new resolution. As soon as I select an option, the screen flickers and displays at the new resolution. It will display a confirmation box, which you have 15 seconds to click to accept the new settings. If you don't click on OK in 15 seconds, the display will revert to the previous setting. The reason for this countdown is if you select an option that your computer's display can't work with, you might just get a blank, black or flickering display. Don't panic, just wait 15 seconds and the screen should reappear as it switches back to the old setting. In this session we have first looked at viewing system information. This includes the version of Windows that the computer is using, as well as the various components installed in the system, such as RAM and processor. I then introduce you to how to change settings using the control panel and Windows System Settings pages. The settings we looked at included the date and time, volume or sound settings, changing the background and finally adjusting the resolution. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.